Hey gang, Canadian Computer Collector here. Do you remember recently when I bought two Mac Pros and two 27 inch iMacs? Uh, I... Well, it just so happens that one of them happened to be a 2015 and we decided to do a review of it. So today we are looking at the 27 inch 2015 5K Retina iMac. This machine's another excellent example of Apple's physical aesthetic working as it should be. I mean, it's an attractive looking machine, it's thin AF, uh, but it doesn't quite pack the punch that I had hoped. Much like most of Apple's products, the 5K Retina display is absolutely gorgeous. It looks like liquid candy that you just want to take a bite out of every time you see the vibrant, rich colors of macOS Monterey. So I recently did a review of a late 2013 13-inch MacBook Pro, and I talked about how beautiful I thought the Retina display was, how vibrant the colors were, all that kind of stuff. Well, this one comes in at an extra 14 inches, ladies, and a native resolution of 5120 by 2880. So yeah, basically the real reason I'm spending so much time on this display is because it runs like a glorified laptop. It's not a bad machine, but it does lack in a few areas. This particular machine has a 3.2 gigahertz quad-core i5, 16 gigs of RAM, and the Radeon M390 graphics card, so it's gonna be like two gigs of VRAM. In theory, it should be able to handle a number of things, uh, but let's take a better look at that. As far as I.O. ports go on this thing, it's actually actually a pretty handsome devil. We got a three and a half millimeter headphone jack, SD card slot, four USB 3 ports, two Thunderbolt 2 ports, and gigabit ethernet. It's only seven years old now, right? You know, when I was seven, I ran all the time. So I'm sure this thing will run just fine. In putting together this review, I, I reviewed it both with Mojave and then with Monterey. I wanted to see if one operating system offered optimization that the other one didn't. Uh, but I found that stuff mostly ran about the same, which makes sense. Before we get into that sort of thing, let's talk about upgradability. This iMac can see some upgrades, but is a massive pain in the ass to do so. To access the internals, you actually have to cut adhesive strips all along the edge of the display using a little pizza cutter style tool. I mean, you can use a, a guitar pick or something like that, but you know, where's the fun in that? It's basically another way for Apple to force sales of new machines to people who don't have the confidence to take apart a PC, you, you know, especially one that's held together with glue. So with that out of the way, I do want to say it's still a very functional machine. You can still edit video, you can edit photos, that sort of thing. It's good for working with media. It's not perfect. You're not going to be editing 4K video flawlessly on this thing, uh, but it works. It's a little bit choppy, but it works. Photoshop runs pretty much perfectly. Uh, Premiere you gave me a little bit of stuttering here and there, but it ran pretty well as well. I should say it handles video playback beautifully. I mean, again, it has a monitor that was designed to look gorgeous. So when you're watching video on YouTube or other streaming apps or whatever, you know, it looks great. And it sounds great because it has excellent speakers in it too. As with most Apple computers, this thing runs Minecraft beautifully. It, it looks great, especially on a 27 inch monitor. I mean, I even like playing it on the 21 and a half. Uh, this just feels more immersive. So if that's your priority, then you're basically covered. Other games run, but not so well. Regardless of the operating system, City Skylines did not go. I mean, it was just unplayable. You would wait 15 minutes for a map to load, and then you couldn't even lay down road without experiencing extreme lag. Like, look at the water. I mean, it's... It's not working out. All right, that's enough. So I would not suggest a game like City Skyline. Uh, Counter-Strike was choppy, but still playable. Managed to get a couple good rounds in there. StarCraft 2 played pretty much perfectly. It's a little laggy at startup, but you know, once the disc gets spinning, that's when the magic really happens, right folks? So I also tried to play Fortnite on this thing, and uh, I conveniently forgot that no one's been able to play Fortnite on an Apple product since Chapter 2, Season 4. So I also tried to play Subnautica on low settings, and the experience was pretty miserable. Uh, but the good news is that there are quite a few classic old vintage games that you can play uh, without too much of an interruption. So that's a plus. Another plus is that June the Cat seems to really like that fancy glass display. So I'm a pretty big proponent of Mojave. I love the idea that I can still play 32-bit games from my Steam library on there. Uh, but I gotta say, like, after installing Monterey, I kind of love it. This machine is still natively supported on Monterey, so installation's easy if you're already running a modern OS. If you're doing, like, an actual internet recovery, this thing recovers to Sierra, so you have to go from Sierra to High Sierra to Mojave, and then you can go to Monterey. So really the question is, should you buy this iMac in 2022? Well, I think if you can find one for a good deal, the answer is definitely yes. I think it's a really attractive machine. 
uh, it would be great to have in a house as like a family computer, that kind of thing. It's good for people who don't do a lot of heavy computing. Um, it'd be good for someone who works on media. Um, but for someone like myself, who does all of those things, but I also play a lot of games with friends. Also, I can just use this lighter to see my path. You see that, Dan? You light your hair on fire. Oh, I'm burning your hair. Right now, Dan. I think Dan might be the ghost. You know, his hair is inflammable. inflammable. <laughs> this doesn't really cut it. So not a gaming machine, but I think we all kind of expected that. So if you're not into gaming for the most part, like other than Minecraft and other lighter applications, like uh, I can imagine Stardew Valley probably runs perfectly on this. Uh, this is probably a machine for you. It'll do all your photo and video editing with little resistance. It'll play movies, TV shows, YouTube videos. It'll stream from all your favorite apps. You can watch your favorite YouTube creator, cough, uh, Canadian computer collector, uh, flawlessly. So the 5K Reddit display is definitely something to write home about. It's an absolutely beautiful monitor. It's fantastic for media consumption. All in all, I would say I probably wouldn't pay more than like 500 US dollars for one of these. Um, even at that price, I would hope that it would have like an independent graphics card. And maybe someone had upgraded the RAM. I don't know. They're starting to get cheaper because support is starting to melt away. So the reality is these are going to be very affordable, probably pretty soon. I'm not going to hang on to this one because it doesn't meet my use case, but I think it would for a lot of people at home. So if you are thinking about one of these, it's a great machine to get uh, if you're not trying to do complex stuff. And then if you are, you probably already know that you need something that needs a little more meat on the bone, gentlemen. So yeah, at the end of the day, it's a great little workhorse that'll likely do what you need it to. It's just not going to improve uh, in the areas where it does need improvements. So take that as you will. Anyway, thank you so much for watching Canadian Computer Collector. I am, of course, in the Canadian Computer Collector. That has not changed. Um, I'd like to thank uh, all my patrons, of whom I have listed right next to me. That'd be Andy, David G, Larry C, Justin M, Ron's Computer Vids, Jason S, Adam M, Group Ride, Dave's Vintage Apple Tech, Trina C, Garth B, Mac84, Ethan P, and Ron 